what is up guys and of course always welcome back to another draft analysis this time from the glitter and defender league and um, for you guys that are new to the channel i did a lot of leagues uh, like for like two months ago we started with a lot of wi-fi's i do want to get back to league see if there's something that suits me and if not this is the last league i do basically i the casual battles are still something i'm gonna do no matter what but i do want to see if league battles can be worthwhile content that said um this league did not go well for me in the draft while you guys can see we started off with sarah aura and i want to re really lead off like, they took like turn four for us to go really down i want to explain what happened but sarah aura easy pickup is one of those pokemon that just it is uh, one of those pokemon that to define it it dictates what speed tier need to be crept and Serora is among the best Pokemon still and um, I think once Coco's out it's gonna have heavy heavy um, like real rivalry but right now Serora is quite right and it was an easy pickup as the Pokemon I really wanted to get which was Dragapult and your Shifu was of course not available when I had my eighth turn clearly <laughs> clearly what you're never supposed to be available but with that said i wanted to make it really easy on me so next pickup was Halucha. the reason for that was because well i really want to get myself Halucha to get with a terrain team and preferably rillaboom and um so i got rillaboom <laughs> and i just explain this combo really and these two together are among the like scariest offensive combination you, there is because the grass is sliding together with their acrobatics on burden boost from Halucha and they two kind of cover each other really well and of course we're leveling a U-turn safely to Halucha and Halucha can be significantly more bulkier than most other Pokemon because of the grass seed um, electric seed and grass seed works roughly the same way boost your defense Halucha really appreciate that and uh, yeah it's just a really tough combination to wall out like efficiently so I was kind of looking forward to getting these two guys together and you know we got it uh, and then things kind of went south because my next picket was going to be Scissor. That Pokemon clearly went uh, in a free, for free, the turn free, can't speak. Uh, so we got Raldon instead. Haven't used Raldon in Smogon nor in the League content, so I'm a bit worried about it. I think it's a good Pokemon, but at the same time, it's not your average Steel type, and it covering both Steel and Dragon means I mean need to be super specific on which other types I get, because basically you really want a Fairy on its own. You want a Steel type on its own, mainly because of their resistances that are exchanged around them. Because clearly, a Dragon type not weak to or weak to fire or neutral to fire is not necessarily that helpful and uh, you just you, you want to level those two things like i said sister was a pickup skarmory was a sister none of them made it and uh, draldon was my pickup i've said that a few times already <laughs> sorry repeating myself basically i didn't know where to go from here so draldon made sense at the time the next one was shandlo originally it was actually in Cinderella. A uh, minute change there. Shandlo for this team, it's great. It works very well with Rillaboom as they recover their weaknesses quite efficiently, really. There is nothing that aren't weak to together. And uh, Shandlo are just really good Pokemon overall. Got a really strong this generation because of Nasty Plot. And um, it's always going to be a threat. And uh, probably one of the few Pokemon I felt. This is something I want, and it does well. Next one was Claydol, uh, my tier 5 Pokemon, low tier Pokemon. And um, Claydol only got because of Teleport and Rapid Spin Stealth Rock, so two things, I guess. Or three, I want to see it. But Claydol is a good lower tier pickup, mainly because of the Teleport strategy. It does allow some Pokemon to be very efficient and come in for freely. As Claydol, while being somewhat passive, got Scorching Sand and can score a burn this generation. Combine that with Calm Mind, Nasty Plot, uh, Psychic, Psy Shogger, Power Shadow Ball, and of course Teleport. And you got actually a Pokemon that could be very scary in its own right, and it's done right. And I actually never used Clay Duel the League environment. I used it plenty in the Generation 7 Smogon meta in higher tiers, and it did alright. Like I said, it's passive, but right now it's rewarded for being passive because of Teleport. Follow that up with Grimmsnarl. <sighs> Not too keen on Grimmsnarl. I think Grimmsnarl is good, but at the same time, for being so offensively active, it's still very passive. 
and um, it is something that I shouldn't say it's bothering me but rather it's hard to make that Pokemon usable outside of the dual screen now it is a great dual screener that won't go away together with Prankster and Thunder Wave it is basically what Cliffkey was uh, in the early generation 6 meta to combine that with a priority sucker punch to make it even stronger so I think it has good merits I just haven't used it myself to really make a clean cut a point or definition of it and of course with bulk up together with the prankster it can be quite nice uh, setup sweeper so like i said i know far too little green snow to appreciate it but at the same time it has its merits and we'll see how viable i can make it that was followed up with barbarical basically i wanted right on or hyperior got none of them so thank you for that <laughs> so i need a rock type and uh, barbarical i always had that pokemon time from time again and shell smash is you know, always incredible combine it with a dual screener right now and choice band or scoffed okay, with switcheroo always been great barbarical because damage output is actually quite high and very hard to prep for and if you prep for it you can still outmaneuver you so I'm not too worried about Barbarical, I think it's a decent Pokemon for what I got and uh, it should allow me to be very efficient. Bit of shame it didn't get flipped time, which have been, would have been great for it, that type of caliber Pokemon that Barbarical is. Plus Pivot is always nice, so damn shame really. Follow it up with Ninjask, don't ask me, I don't know why I got it. I actually have Vespa Queen there before, don't ask me about that either, because I really couldn't tell you why I got it. I think it was soft with Defog, um, it's not gonna stay. <laughs> then I got Toxtricity, um, the Galerian form of that I was going to say, but no, the, the, the Dynamax form of the Toxtricity. Originally I had actually G-Max a Colossal and um, I think it made sense for what was starting to build up, but with all the Pokemons I wanted to get getting sniped before me, uh, eventually Toxtricity was the one making most sense and... <laughs> I had Garbodor and Toxtricity to decide from because I didn't want any poison types that was lower tier that was left. The reason I decided to go with Toxtricity is because in its own right it's a lot stronger than the other Pokemon that was involved in that tier so it made sense to get it out of the damage output. It is a bit on the frailer side and a 4 times weakness to ground is always going to be something to be wary about but besides that I think it can do alright. And I am um, due to the GMAX function and how bulky and theoretical the Pokemon can be, it's probably always gonna be brought. So our, <laughs> I think it has good merit for sure. Um, and the last Pokemon was Wigglytuff because Wigglytuff is awesome, and I really want a Drampa, which clearly already went. <laughs> but Wigglytuff, what can I say? Um, I used it a lot in this early. Isle of Armor meta and had a really really good experience with it. It is not the perfect Pokemon. It's a poor Wish Passer, it's a poor Stealth Rocker, it's a poor Polgy Pokemon, but it is Wigglytuff and I feel like that needs to kind of just be said. Wigglytuff is just awesome and it's alright and uh, for being a normal fairy, I mean with Mega Odino gone it's very very alone in that tier or combination and have a normal type that is not weak to finding can always be good. It makes the team in itself not necessarily that weak to finding at all. I think the only Pokemon that are weak to it theoretically are Barbarical and Duraldon and that's a rare trait to kind of not have a lot of weaknesses to it. At the same time I do have somewhat of a Stealth Rocks issue um, Ninjas clearly don't want to be switched into that and Shadow Lore always gonna suck so uh, with switchings that is so rapid spin is gonna be kind of important I think Claydol is very alone there and Halusha is never gonna be necessarily my defogger so it is a build issue here that I don't necessarily been able to parry just yet but it's something I'm gonna look into more once the free agent starts going but this is a team right now I do think they're good synergies but I'm not perfectly happy with it and I'll keep you guys posted if or when I do the changes just to really get you guys get a feeling for what I want to do and um, besides that I think my, my combination of Sarah Aura Rillaboom, Halucha, that combination is solid, Toxtricity makes sense there, Shandlo gonna stay, Claydol's gonna stay, Wigglytuff's gonna stay because it's Wigglytuff. Mm. <laughs> and the rest are available. I think I am able to drop Grimstroll and potentially Ninjas because of the unconventional aspects about them. But those unconventional aspects are more inborn with my playstyle and synergy and I feel 
I kind of messed that up. So I feel I have a vision. We'll see how much I can adapt to that moving forward. But with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this draft league analysis. And, you know, follow this season, see how I do, and see if Willis Huff actually will be a key leader. That's the goal. That's the absolute goal. So with that said, with those guys, thank you for watching, and have a great day. Of course, take care, everyone.